Hello and welcome back to another video for my channel. My name is Jet Smith and I'm the head coach of speech and debate at Highland High School in Pocatello, Idaho. This video will serve as a topic lecture for the January 2024 public forum debate resolution, which reads, the United States federal government should repeal section 230 of the Communications Decency Act. So in this topic lecture, we will first discuss the wording of the resolution, give you some important terms, as well as background information. Then we'll discuss 10 arguments for the pro side and 10 arguments for the con side. So first with resolutionary analysis, we'll look into these five issues. So the first step is trichotomy or what type of topic is it? And as is becoming more frequently common in public forum debate, this is a policy resolution. Policy resolutions are phrased as an actor should take an action. And this topic has an actor in the United States, the word should, and the action of repealing Section 230, which makes it a policy resolution. So you should be discussing harms in the status quo or good things in the status quo, how the topic will shift those things, and why that matters. Now let's look into definitions, which are going to be very important on this topic, because chances are, if you're a high school student or an average member of the public, when you first read the topic, you didn't know what Section 230 was. So Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act uh, has two major tenets in U.S. law, and it came out in response to Supreme Court decisions that were holding Internet companies liable for what their users were posting uh, in the early days of the Internet. So the first major tenet or important part of Section 230 is that a platform online is not a publisher of information, which means that they are not liable just because they host content created by users. So the specific wording or the 26 words that created the internet, as it's called, is no provider or user of an interactive computer service shall be treated as the publisher or speaker of any information provided by another information content provider. So basically, if I post something on Facebook, Facebook is not the publisher of that information, which means that Facebook cannot be sued for the content that I publish on Facebook, even though I can. And the second major part, although less frequently discussed, is that just because you are a moderator of content online on your platform does not mean that you are the publisher. So you are not liable for all content on your website just because you choose to restrict some content on your website. This states, uh, and I'm you know, cutting out some words here for the sake of time, no provider or user of an interactive computer service shall be held liable on account of any action voluntarily taken in good faith to restrict access to or availability of material that the provider or users consider to be obscene, lewd, lascivious, filthy, excessively violent, harassing, or otherwise objectionable, whether or not such material is constitutionally protected. So this gives companies the ability to restrict even constitutionally protected speech without being labeled a publisher for all speech on their website. So this law is the subject of the resolution. Specifically, the pro is advocating that we get rid of this legislation or repeal it. Now, repeal could mean one of two things. One of them is better for the con, which is the first one, and one is better for the pro. So the first way that you could define repeal is to explicitly repeal without a replacement, which basically just means to remove a law. So uh, the act of removing the legal force of a law to make a law no longer a law. However, the way that laws are more often repealed uh, is by replacement, which is an implicit repeal. So you revoke a law by subsequent legislation. So if you've ever heard any uh, Congress bill for speech and debate say any legislation in conflict with this legislation is hereby declared null and void, that's basically what this is doing. It's when a new law contradicts an older law to the point where the two laws could not exist at the same time, effectively getting rid of the earlier law. Uh, so you could d discuss this as implied repeal. When a new law conflicts with an old one and the old one is considered to be canceled or no longer valid, the new law takes precedence over the old one. So the pro could want to say that we will implicitly repeal Section 230 by replacing it with something as a form of repeal, whereas the con wants to say, no, you just have to remove the law. So why are we discussing this topic? Here are some of the highlights of things that have occurred throughout history uh, as to why we're discussing this in the background. So Section 230 was created in the early days of the internet to help protect new internet companies and startups from frivolous lawsuits that might disrupt their operations uh, and make it so that companies didn't want to be on the internet. Now, conservatives are recently unhappy with the law because they think that it protects internet companies, social media companies that censor political conservative posts, uh, as well as potentially 
allowing criminal posts online uh, to not receive any attention and companies can get off scot-free. Specifically, Donald Trump and his allies are mostly those who have called for a complete repeal of Section 230. However, there is bipartisan uh, dislike for Section 230 because several liberal politicians and users are unhappy because they think that the law gives a free pass to social media companies and online platforms uh, to not moderate content. It's supposed to say not moderate content that is discriminatory or regime. So they think that companies are letting people get away with whatever they want on the internet without moderating because Section 230 basically lets them get off scot-free. Now, the Supreme Court has over and over again, when Section 230 has been brought up in cases, upheld the highest amount of liability protection possible. Uh, so it's supposed to be protecting companies as much as possible. Uh, and the Supreme Court also oftentimes uh, gets confused as to what Section 230 does. So it should say the broadest level of immunity, not liability to companies. And the Supreme Court doesn't understand the internet as much as they would like as they tend to be older. So the Supreme Court basically just says, yep, Section 230 gives immunity in almost every case. Now, there are some exceptions and reforms to the law that have been proposed, and some of those have been passed. So now companies can face liability for sex trafficking and child pornography related content on their websites, even if they are not the publisher of that content. So some people are asking for more, though. So most of the time in the literature, people are asking for reforms to Section 230. The pro might say that we are going to repeal Section 230 as is and then pass a similar law uh, that would basically function as a reform. But the con wants to say that that is not a repeal. If all you're doing is keeping most of Section 230 but changing it a bit, they will say that is not a repeal, that is a reform. So who is at stake or who will be affected by the outcome of this resolution should it be repealed in real life? Uh, the people that you'll want to be discussing are the social media and technology companies that are regulated by the law, as well as people who use social media will likely affect the way that they use it. And additionally, uh, politicians have an interest based on uh, the type of speech or the type of political opinion that is likely to be expressed or moderated online as a result of Section 230. What are the main issues at stake on this topic? I would say that there are three points of clash that are going to come up over and over again for both sides of the topic. And that is, does repealing Section 230 increase or uh, censorship uh, or moderation? Uh, or does it mean that there will be totally freedom to post whatever you want and people will run wild? Some people say that Section 230 is what allows companies to moderate. Some people say that Section 230 discourages companies from moderating. Some people say that we need to get rid of it because companies are censoring. Other people say if you get rid of censorship, they'll censor everything to avoid getting sued. Additionally, there's a concern of does Section 230 allow for smaller companies uh, to compete with the bigger companies? Or uh, does Section 230 lead to monopolization of the tech industry? And lastly, there's a discussion of do we need to get rid of this law or do we need to reform this law? Uh, and that will definitely come up in most debates. So now we will discuss pro arguments. I have 10 arguments that could be turned into contentions uh, for the pro side of this topic, which are all reasons why we should repeal Section 230 of the CDA or the Communications Decency Act. Most of the rest of the Communications Decency Act has already been ruled like unconstitutional or made null and void. So Section 230 is really the only part left that matters. The first major pro argument that you could read is breaking up big tech. Uh, and this argument basically says that right now there are lots of huge online platforms like Facebook and Google and X, formerly known as Twitter, that dominate the internet, have all the data, and they basically snuff out their competition However, huge companies are going to be more hurt by repealing Section 230 because they have the most posts, they have the most content uh, that would open them up for lawsuits uh, and that would open them up for litigation, which means that the bigger your platform is, the more types of speech there are, the more moderation you have to do, uh, the more likely you are to be sued after repealing 230. Whereas small companies would be more likely to thrive by being able to more closely monitor their posts after 
uh, repealing Section 230. If you look at other companies that moderate the internet differently, while yes, they have companies like Facebook and Instagram, they also have way more small online companies uh, and small online user platforms than the United States does. The impact is that if we break up big tech or if big tech uh, gets uh, weaker, then smaller companies will be able to thrive, which means that there will be more innovation and competition, making things better on the internet for users. The second argument the pro could make is controlling for algorithmic bias. Now, social media companies are not publishing what their users say on their platform. However, they use algorithms to make some posts get more attention than others, which basically is what publishers do uh, when they try to promote certain uh, types of media. So the argument here is that big tech companies are using their algorithms to promote posts over others. And because algorithms try to promote posts that are, you know, the craziest will get the most likes, sometimes the algorithms promote stuff that is illegal, offensive, and harmful. Now, if we remove Section 230, companies would begin to become reliable and uh, liable for what their algorithms promote on their platform, even if they didn't post it, which means that they'll likely make their algorithms more responsible uh, and less likely to unfairly or harmfully uh, post or promote content that is bad. The impact is that there will be less bias from the algorithms in what they promote, which will make uh, competition and fairness better on the internet, as well as making it a safer place to be. Third pro argument could be combating terrorism. Uh, right now, online platforms, particularly Facebook, uh, is used by terrorist groups to recruit, radicalize, and communicate with people. But if we repeal Section 230, it means that companies would be held responsible for what people are posting about and messaging about on their platforms, which means that companies would be more incentivized to try and find and take down terrorist organizations on their platforms, uh, which plan or mo get motivated by posts on their websites. This means that companies will be stricter with their counterterrorism measures, decreasing the likelihood of terrorist organization on their website, and thus the likelihood of attacks caused by uh, social media. Fourth argument here is curbing fake news. Now, everyone's probably heard that fake news is all over the place on social media platforms. And if we repeal Section 230, companies could be held responsible for consequences as a result of fake news being posted to their website, which would encourage them to engage in more fact checking and content moderation to reduce the spread of fake news, which is good because fake news is bad for political polarization and for democracy. Fifth argument area that the pro could discuss and turn into a contention on this topic is decreasing drug crime. Uh, again, this is another type of post that is frequently, uh, you know, not held responsible for companies because of the immunity from Section 230. So right now, illegal drug sales and distribution networks uh, happen on online platforms and social media websites. But if we repeal Section 230, then platforms, again, just like with the terrorism argument, will be more likely to patrol for, find, and take down illegal content and activity, uh, which would remove drug-related content, helping to reduce drug overdoses, illegal drug trade, uh, and public health concerns as a result of drug usage. Sixth argument is again quite similar, but it's about sex crimes. Right now, online platforms are frequently used to distribute explicit content without people's consent in the form of revenge porn uh, in particular, which causes exploitation, harassment, and crime. Uh, if we get rid of Section 230, then platforms would be responsible for the explicit content on their website that is criminal, which means that they'd be more likely to remove that content and to patrol and monitor for that content and take down uh, explicit materials that are posted without people's consent. Uh, this will make companies more responsible for the explicit materials on their website, decrease exposure to these harmful materials, particularly for minors, as well as protect the rights of victims of sex crimes uh, and people whose explicit images and videos have been taken and posted without their consent. Seventh argument is moderating extremism. Right now, extremist ideologies and radical ideas uh, are spread on online platforms, which causes people to be radicalized and then commit acts of violence. But if we repeal Section 230, platforms would be responsible for that extremist content that is on their website that may or may not be constitutionally protected uh, and means that if uh, violent actions or crimes uh, take place because of the content on that platform, then they would be responsible for it, making them more likely to try and uh, moderate the extremist content and take down posts that shouldn't be there. 
that means that there is less likely to spread radical ideas and reducing the risk of violence based off of things that people are seeing online, particularly on social media. Eighth argument is all about protecting privacy. Online platforms, big social media companies have tons of data from their users and they sell that data for a profit. But when that data is leaked uh, or when people's personal information uh, is taken and posted online, then it can be posted without permission and the company can be like, well, we're not the ones who posted it. Now, repealing Section 230 would encourage companies to change the way that they collect data because what is posted from that data they could be held responsible for. Uh, and it means that if somebody's private information is posted by another user, then users would be able to get the companies to take down that private information. Otherwise, the company would be at risk of getting sued. Uh, and protecting privacy is good because it makes fraud less likely to happen. Users will have more choices uh, and they will be able to improve their safety online. Ninth argument is punishing political censorship, which is probably the main argument uh, given by people calling for the total repeal of uh, Section 230. And that is that if we get rid of it, then political opinions will be censored less often. Uh, some politicians believe that platforms are frequently engaging in online censorship with political opinions that they disagree with, which limits their free expression. Uh, and if we get rid of Section 230, then companies would be punished uh, for, you know, taking down freedom of speech potentially, uh, or taking down posts that they disagree with. Uh, so this might encourage them to be more neutral content moderators. And this is good because censorship is bad because when we have censorship, we don't have a diversity of political opinion. Uh, we take away people's freedom of speech and we, uh, disprove, or we do not help, uh, democratic decision-making. So we should want a diversity of political opinion online. Lastly is regulating artificial intelligence. AI has blown up in the past couple of years in terms of its potential and online platforms are experimenting with sharing content generated by artificial intelligence, but uh, they are not held responsible for content that is artificial intelligence generated right now, which means that if we repeal section 230, platforms that choose to share content generated by AI would be responsible for the consequences of that content, meaning that they are more likely to regulate artificial intelligence usage on their website, which will create compliance with ethical standards, reduce the potential bias from artificial intelligence, and encourage uh, the responsible development of artificial intelligence. So these are the 10 arguments that I've seen discussed in the literature about why we should repeal uh, or massively change, which you can call a repeal by getting rid of it and then replacing it, uh, of Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act. Now we will discuss 10 arguments on the con or 10 reasons why we should not repeal Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act. The first major argument for the con is causing court clog uh, or flooding the judicial system with lawsuits and criminal cases that currently do not happen with all of the new things that you could be held responsible for on social media as a company. So right now, courts are reducing the amount of backlog that they have in cases that were caused by the pandemic. But if we repeal Section 230, there will be a never ending list of lawsuits against online service providers because of billions of posts that people could be upset about. Uh, and that will strain our legal system by meaning that we don't have enough lawyers to cover all the cases. We don't have enough judges to listen to all the cases. It will slow down the justice system. And if you might have heard the phrase, justice delayed is justice denied. The second argument is about crushing competition. There are many who believe the only reason small platforms can compete with big platforms is because of Section 230. Right now, uh, tech startups can thrive because they're not afraid of lawsuits based off of what their users post. But if you get rid of Section 230, small companies don't have the staff to moderate every single post on their site uh, or the money to fight every single lawsuit against their company like companies like Google and Facebook might be able to. Uh, this means that there will be less competition leading to greater monopolies in the tech sector, decreasing the choices that consumers can make and decreasing innovation as a result of lack of competition. The third argument is decreasing moderation. The second part of Section 230 is what says companies, you can choose to take down some content on your website without being treated as responsible for all content on your website. If you get rid of Section 230, then now any company that chooses to moderate content at all could be responsible for all content, meaning they just say, okay, we won't moderate any, so we're not seen as responsible for any of it. 
Now, if we have no moderation, that will be really bad because it will create a toxic online environment, including uh, misinformation spread as well as hate speech. Fourth argument would be destroying economic growth because online social media platforms are really huge drivers of economic activity and investment from advertising to shopping. If you get rid of Section 230, the sector becomes riskier and will likely lose a lot of money to lawsuits from users leaving their platform uh, and from less stuff being sold online, which means that the economic benefits of online media platforms will likely decrease, which will result in job loss, potentially decreasing innovation and destroying the growth of the industry, hurting our overall GDP. Fifth argument is eliminating user reviews. Now, user reviews are a type of user-generated content that most people don't think about, but when somebody reviews a product, a service, or you know, entertainment experiences, uh, consumers can make better choices because they get to read what other reviews are being posted. But if a company or a person doesn't like the review, uh, then right now, maybe they can sue the person who put the review up but they can't hold the company responsible. So the company has no reason to take down reviews. But if you get rid of Section 230, then companies will no longer want to have reviews on their websites because posting those reviews uh, could make them get sued even if they're not the ones who posted it, they're just hosting it. Now, getting rid of user reviews might be really bad because it will make things less transparent. Consumers won't be able to make as informed decisions uh, and businesses won't be as accountable to their consumers through the review process. Sixth argument is increasing censorship. So this argument uh, runs the risk of contradicting the other arguments that are here because some people will say there will be less moderation if you get rid of it. Some people say there will be more moderation. So I would not read both of those contentions at the same time. Um, so right now, companies don't really censor posts because they're not responsible for what people say. So they don't have a reason to censor anything because they're not going to be responsible for even the worst stuff that's on there most of the time. If you get rid of Section 230, companies will be so afraid of every single post getting them sued or in trouble with the law that they are likely to remove anything uh, that could be potentially dangerous or result in legal action. So censorship will increase, which you would say is bad, because it limits the freedom of expression, uh, it decreases the diversity of opinions, uh, and it means that there will be a chilling effect on speech and people will be afraid to post as a result of getting in trouble or getting their stuff taken down. Seventh argument is infringing on privacy. So right now, companies, even though they have access to everybody's posts and access to everybody's private messages, they don't really have a reason to look at those messages because Section 230 protects them from being liable for that content in most cases. If you repeal Section 230, everything from a post to private messages could be sued uh, the company for, which means that they will be more likely to heavily monitor and read uh, and expose people's private data uh, and private messages, which is bad because it will erode the trust of users, making them less likely to use the platform. Perhaps it means that data breaches are more likely because they're more closely collecting the data uh, and your rights to privacy online will be undermined. Uh, the next three arguments that I have for the con are alternatives to repealing. So these are basically ways that we could reform Section 230 without getting rid of Section 230, especially if you can explain that you are trying to add to Section 230 uh, rather than eliminate it or repeal part of it, then I think that you'll be able to prove that you could not repeal and uh, reform at the same time. So you could argue that Section 230 protects companies' rights to moderate uh, we, without being responsible. So they can choose to take down some posts without being responsible for all posts, but it does not require that companies moderate. If we get rid of Section 230, then you're no longer protected for moderation, which means some companies won't moderate at all. So instead, we should uh, change the law to say you only get liability protection if you moderate. So the only way for you to be not responsible for posts is if you follow guidelines to moderate posts on the internet. Uh, without moderation, then, then online safe space will be less of a place that people want to be due to an increase in hate speech, extremism, or misinformation. Uh, argument number nine is another alternative or reform to Section 230 that you could advocate for, which is carving out exceptions. So right now, there are two major exceptions to Section 230, where Section 230 does not apply to online platforms, giving them immunity. 
So that would be sex trafficking as well as intellectual property. So right now, there's tons of protection. The Supreme Court basically says everything is protected by Section 230 except for these two things. If you get rid of Section 230 entirely, then you eliminate protections for all content. But instead, we should just add to the list of things that Section 230 does not cover. So child abuse-related content, terrorism-related content, and cyber-stalking-related content could all be added to the list of things like sex trafficking and intellectual property so that Section 230 doesn't protect those bad things. It protects pretty much everything else. So you would argue that most of the time Section 230 is really good for whatever reason we discussed earlier, but we can change Section 230 to allow us to fight child abuse, terrorism, and cyber-stalking online. So it's basically saying don't throw out a good law because it has a few problems. The final argument that I think the con could make is another alternative about clarifying the language, which is frequently discussed in the literature. So Section 230 is interpreted really broadly, giving blanket immunity to pretty much every company, even when they're in the wrong. If you get rid of Section 230, then you get rid of all protections, even when they're well-deserved. So instead, what we should do is just clarify the language of really vague terms, like companies need to, uh, you know, monitor for otherwise objectionable content, which could be anything. Uh, and it also says that as long as a company is acting in good faith, that they are given protection, but those terms are incredibly vague. So we could clarify what rights online platforms have under Section 230, but also what responsibilities they have to get those rights under Section 230. And again, you're basically saying Section 230 is good most of the time for whatever reasons discussed earlier, um, but it can make it so that companies aren't held accountable when they should be because there's no clarity on what the law is and does. So at the end of this video, here are a couple of things that I would keep in mind when debating this topic come January. You should first read all of Section 230. It's not that long of a law, but it's very important to understand, and you might find things that other people don't, and you'll sound very well-educated on the topic. Honestly, I might even memorize the two major tenets of the law, the one that says you are not a publisher just because you host information, and you are not a publisher just because you moderate information. Memorizing the wording of those sections will really help you, I think, in the rounds. Additionally, you need to be thinking forward because there are every company or every country on the world has internet access, but we are the only one with Section 230. Every country moderates or requires moderation or gives some sort of protection to companies online, but most of them do it differently than the United States. So you need to be thinking, what happens after we repeal Section 230? Uh, what is likely to replace it, or what happens if we do not replace it with any other law. So be thinking, if I'm the pro team, what world am I painting a picture for the judge? What does content regulation or lawsuit ability for companies look like online after getting rid of Section 230? And same thing with the con. What happens, or what is the new law, or what is the new actions that are taken as a result of repeal? Third, really focus on the link level of your arguments because you can see a lot of the pro arguments are just the opposite of the con arguments and vice versa, which means you're going to be making similar contentions on both sides of the topic. So you need to focus on the links, the very specific reasons why, why is censorship going to increase or decrease? Why is moderation going to increase or de decrease? Why is competition or privacy going to increase or decrease? And be ready to explain the differences because it will be very easy to make turns. Remember that while counter plans and plans are not allowed in public forum, you are allowed to defend generalized reasonable solutions. And if it's in the literature, as long as you're not defending how much does it cost, when are we going to implement it, who's responsible for it. If it's not reading an in-depth plan or like a Congress bill, then you should be fine saying this is just a general solution. Um, and make sure that you're ready to defend that on the con if you're reading an alternative or defend that on the pro if you're advocating for repealing through replacement. With that being said, I'm glad that this topic got picked and not the other one, but I do think that it is leaning toward the con. To me, the only way to overcome the con bias in the literature and on the topic is if the pro can defend an alternative that replaces it, but there are lots of arguments as to maybe why they shouldn't be allowed to do so. So uh, I wish you the best of luck in the January portion of your season. I know that for some places that's your national qualifying or your district tournaments, and I will see you in the next video.